What's up guys, it's Bolt, and I'm back with another Remnant 2 build guide. And in this video, we're going to go over my Nerudian Nightmare Grey Health build, and I'm really excited about this build as well. Another really fun off-meta build that is still capable of handling those Apocalypse Gauntlets, and while doing it in style... And at the brink of death, because you will be at 100% max gray health throughout this entire build use. We are utilizing gray health to use two extremely powerful trinkets that really boost up our damage. And how are we going to survive being at 100% gray health? Well, that is a great question because we have the newcomer here, the newcomer archetype in the warden, which provides us a shield. And we will be having our shield up at all times. And that's going to that's going to be essentially our life bar. But let's just get right into it. We have the Warden Archetype type slotted in first. And this is really kind of controversial. As because 99% of Engineer builds do have Engineer slotted in first for that overclock ability. But in this case, we need the dynamic Prime perk. We need the extra shield that that gives. And it also doesn't hurt that we do get the... The energy reserves for turret and the drone increase by 50% with the dynamic prime perk. And that comes in handy because the shield drone tends to drain a lot, a lot of energy when giving us our shield. So the extra 50% it does come in handy big time and very important. And you know what? We don't even really need overclock on this build because with the impact cannon, what we have set up here. This impact cannon crits for massive damage even without overclock. And this is primarily an impact cannon build. Sure, you can use the other archetype, uh, the other engineer skills, but the impact cannon, this is primarily for this build because our weak spot crits are about 10k plus damage. Really absurd amount of damage we have set up with this. And on the impact cannon as well, if you need to deploy the if you need if you need to deploy it in turret mode, it is great for just dungeon clearing world creep clearing when you need to run and get the hell out of dodge because your shield is down for whatever reason you need to retreat regroup you pop that damn impact cannon down and that thing draws so much aggro and does crazy aoe damage man it's such a good uh, turret skill it's probably one of the better turret skills in my opinion but the impact cannon itself this is a heavy carry primarily build and you will be heavy carrying that impact cannon doing massive damage now this is a monster amulet newly ad added with DLC 3, the K9 Keepsake. Increases all damage by 2.5 critical chance. Uh, increases all damage by 2.5%, critical chance by 1.5%, and critical damage by 1.5% for every 5% of total health present as gray health. And we will be at 100% gray health, meaning we will be having that 25% damage increase, 15% critical chance, and 15% critical damage at max stacks monster damage is coming from this guys and if you guys didn't know this this thing does combo with the ring of omens meaning we will have the misty step misty step will allow us to wear the heaviest possible armor without being in a dodge penalty and on top of that ring of omens is going to help us keep our gray health constantly man what a lovely combo ring of omens has crazy iframe so this also further increases our survivability Next ring, and this ring can be swapped out, is the Ateri Booster. This gives us a nice chunk of damage increase as well. But if you're going to run an APOC Gauntlet, I found it very useful to run the Ring of Ordnance just so you don't fall off on the ammo capacity and energy from your drone. Now, this is because during the later levels of APOC Gauntlets, the enemies tend to get more tanky and take more shots, so you will be running out of ammo. So, put in that Ring of Ordnance right there when you need it. Swap it out for the Ateri Booster. Probability cord. This is going to be a massive increase to our damage. We do have a decently high crit chance with this build, given the prism and everything like that. So when we crit, we will be critting for big time damage. Ring of Omens. We already went over, and then another Gray Health monster in the Ring of the Dam. This is going to give us 20% all damage and 5% crit damage when we're at max stacks. So these two ring, this ring and this amulet right here are going to give us big time damage along with the probability cord. Now, the Ring of Omens is going to give us some survivability. And then the Ateri Booster, if you do so choose, will give us more damage. Or the Ring of Ordnance for some nice quality of life. Now, the two weapons we chose here are no stranger to you guys. They're pretty, pretty damn boring. But since this is primarily a heavy carry build, we just need some passive damage 
uh, while we're in heavy carry. And on top of that, these two weapons right here provide us uh, provide us with a debuff on the enemy, and further increasing our damage. And that is the Nebula with the feedback mutator to get it back quicker, and the Monolith uh, with thousand cuts on this. And this is because if I do have to plop my turret down in turret mode, and I need to kill some enemies with my uh, primary fire, then the thousand cuts will be helping us out immensely with that. That is because sometimes the impact cannon just doesn't handle all situations very well in terms of getting swarmed by like the Dran enemy, the, I'm sorry, not the Dran, the Fey flying guys. They're pretty nimble and it will be kind of hard to hit those enemies. So I will just plop my turret down and then use the monolith primary fire. But the nice thing about monolith is the sandstorm. This is what we want when, we're in, when we're, we are in heavy carry. Launch out that sandstorm apply the exposed debuff on enemies thus further increasing our impact cannon damage as for the melee use whatever you choose we don't really melee with this uh, with this build i like the harvester scythe because scythe because it looks really cool and it has the shocker mutator on there one charge heavy does proc shocker as for the armor you want to go with heavy dot ultra heavy armor so you want to use any of the leto armors or the new um nerudian armor i forgot the name of it which is the uh fader sensor that's what you want to use there but we're going with the full Lettos here. This is going to give us the maximum damage reduction. If you guys didn't know that your shields do are impacted by damage reduction. So the higher you are, the less piece of your shield will be taken off when you get hit. So we went with full Lettos. And again, we're not affected by the uh, stamina penalty because we will be a Misty Step. And when we're not heavy carrying, we're at 63.5. And when you are heavy carrying and the shield uh, gives you that 10% debuff when it's working. Because apparently right now the 10% DR... Uh, buff is not currently not working you will be over 70 percent on the damage damage reduction which is not too shabby with the uh traits that we have here uh keep in mind guys with shields very important when you're running a gauntlet make sure you use ethereal orbs in between uh dungeons because when you are in a shield you take double shot damage so if you encounter an aberration that does have shocker it probably will one shot you because you take double shock damage so make sure you use some ethereal orbs so, uh, to further increase your resistances to shock and as far as our relic we have the lifeless heart and this is a very underutilized uh relic so it's if it's this this particular build very very beautifully because it does not heal us we do not want to be healed we want to keep great health we have 20 charges we have 50 percent use uh speed with it so what this is essentially for is when we need to proc the uh respective archetype relic perks so for the warden relic perk we have energized which is uh gives us a shield for 31.2 percent of our max health can't stack it, it lasts for 10 percent and uh it gives us unlimited energy while this is in the uh 10 second duration very nice to have if you're in an oh crap moment you got to run away and your shield is depleted and you need to refill it you pop that relic or if you're out of ammo you need uh more ammo for your impact cannon or you need more energy for your drone you pop those they, they they're relatively quick to use and you're back ready to go ready to get back into the action you could be generous with them. We have 20 of these. You will never run out. Amazing. On to the traits. We have barrier fortifies the respective archetype traits. Potency because we do utilize co uh, consumables and concoctions on this build. If you do not use consumables for whatever reason, then feel free to spec into anything else of your choice. I really enjoy using consumables. They provide such a big, big uh, bonus to us. So uh, potency is the way to go. Flashcaster to get our equipment out faster. Swiftness, we only have uh, seven points in there for our movement speed. Vigor, we want that, obviously, because your shield does scale with your vigor. Even if we do not have uh, full health bar on this build, your shield will be further increased with the more sh uh, vigor you do have. Spirit to get our mods up quicker. Bark skin for more tankiness. We need to be at maximum tankiness here. Shark to keep those mods out longer while we're out there. And here's a good one, Resolute. Resolute lets you recover from hit stun more quickly so this is very important if we do get hit we could uh you you know dodge out of the next following hit or whatever we need to do and not get stun locked to death because uh we we do need to be mindful of our shields so if we do need to retreat this is going to help us with that right there a few points it's a glutton just to use those consumables and those relics a little bit faster and fitness at five and i didn't max out fitness because i feel like at max fitness you dodge way too far with Missy Steps, so much so that you need to be careful of the terrain around you, and you will die to gravity if you're not careful with how how far you are dodging. So five is the sweet spot that I found in that regard. Now on to our prism. This is the prism. You want something similar to this. We have on the fragments, we have critical damage, skill critical chance, and skill damage. This is going to give us some nice, juicy, freaking 
uh, damage right here. Skill damage could be subbed out for weak spot damage if you're fighting somebody like I Annihilation, but I just felt more reliability and more better general use with skill damage. And as for the prism itself, skill damage is the single fragment. We want the meta uh, fusion right here for the weak spot and crit damage because our fusion cannon does crit and does weak spot, obviously. So we want that. This is a nice damage um, increase right here. Longevity, just to keep our mods out there longer. Wizard. We have that for the critical chance on both the respective uh, mods and skills. Protected for shield amount and armor. And then last but not least, Jack of All Trades to increase all of our damage by 45%. Now, if you cannot roll Jack of All Trades, then something that's going to give you more damage reduction will come in handy. Uh, Master Killer will be pretty good as well if you cannot roll this because that does affect in impact cannon. Uh, Impervious is a good one. Um, stuff like that. But uh, the Nerudian down the... Um, the legendary that gives you infinite Nerudian energy is not good in my opinion. We have so many different ways to upkeep our energy levels and our turret ammo with the Ring of Ordnance, with the Relic Perks and stuff like that. That That's a waste of a legendary in my opinion. So go with some of the recommendations that I have given you. But that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed this build. If you're curious to see how it performs in a gauntlet, I did complete a full 19 out of 19 APOC gauntlet with this build. And I did it pretty easily, to be honest with you. It was such a great build. The, the shield is up at, uh, at at all times. We do really good damage. We're very uh, nimble and mobile with the with the Misty, st misty Step. And uh, we just have this build has a, real, a lot going for it. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think of this. Don't be too afraid to have those uh, gray health. Uh, out there um and speaking of gray health and speaking of gauntlet there is a glitch that after you complete a, it after you defeat a boss it does remove your gray health so if you do re beat a boss and you do need to uh replenish your gray health back then you're gonna have to use the ring of phantom pain and it is a pain it, it's called pain in, 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 because you have to switch this damn ring out every time you beat a boss so it, it does get quite annoying uh but this is going to uh, convert your missing health back to gray health uh so in between each bosses you will have to do that so that's it guys please if you enjoyed this video consider giving it a like a share subscribe if you have not done so already and i'll catch you guys on the next one